Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on The Flash Season 6. Well, actually, really, Season 7. Today, we're going to be talking about some big news in regards to two different actors and two different characters who are going to be sticking around for much more next season. So, if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe if you're new so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so we've got some big news. I think this is pretty big news. We got two actors who are going to be upped to series regular this season. So if you don't know what happens before you're a series regular, series regular is when you appear in like every episode or like at least like once every two episodes or something like that. I don't know the exact rules, but basically you're around pretty much consistently throughout the whole season. And so this obviously gives us an idea for the sort of path that they want to go down for this next season and stuff like that. And we will be theorizing about some of this as well. But anyway, so yeah, the big news. Kayla Compton, who plays Allegra Garcia on The Flash, who came this season. I don't think she was that big of a deal until, you know, we've had this stuff with Nash Wells recently. And now she's become a bigger deal because she was very much so just like a background character that was just added into Iris's team. And now she's kind of interesting but again, she doesn't do that much, that's the problem. And I think once Nash goes, where is her story gonna go? I feel like that is the question, because she isn't honestly that interesting apart from her relationship to Nash. And I do believe that Nash is probably gonna go away by the end of the season, like, you know, normal Harrison Wells's do by the end of the season pretty much every year. So, I don't know what direction they're gonna push her into. Maybe she's going to be pushed into a more sort of superhero lane that would make a lot more sense because she has these powers but she doesn't use them that much apart from like really occasionally. She doesn't have like a superhero suit or anything like that so I'm guessing that they're going to probably push it into that lane and I think that would actually be cool. I would like to see that but if she continues down the same path and then she finishes with Nash and she doesn't use her powers next season very much I don't see where she's going to go but I have to say congratulations to Kayla because this is obviously a big thing. She will be a series regular. She's a recurring character as of right now and so this is a big step for a lot of actors and I think it's very interesting that they have chosen to up her to a series regular because maybe they do have like some sort of big plans in regards to like superheroing. So I would like to see that. Now let's move on to talk about the next piece of information. This is that Brandon McKnight has been up to a series regular for season 7 of The Flash, just like Kayla. So Brandon McKnight plays Chester P. Runk on the TV show. Again, I still don't get that name. That name's a bit, like, kind of weird. Chester P. Runk. Why not Chester Runk or something? I don't know. It sounds too much like funk. So I always am like, Chester Funk? Huh? What? No, I think it's an interesting name, but it's still kind of odd. But anyway, so yeah. He played a decent role last episode, and last episode I got the idea that potentially he could be around much more next season because we haven't had him incorporated into the team. He literally just, like, appeared at the start of the season, went away, came back for, like, one episode, and he came back last episode, and I don't know how much more of this season he's going to be in, but it seems like they have plans to actually make him like a full-time character because of right now it's just really guest star appearances where he pops up and does a few things here and there but like i said last episode we got the taste for him being around more because he was like in this whole episode and then barry actually talked to him and had like you know a proper conversation and he was sort of inducted into the team i would say so I'm excited for Brandon, I think I do prefer Brandon over Kayla on the show as of right now, so I would say I'm probably a bit more excited to see Chester around. So he's going to be a series regular, so that means he's going to obviously be around for a lot of this season. So congrats on the promotion, if Brandon is somehow watching this. But yeah, let me know in the comments down below, what do you think about this? What do you think about, you know, Chester being around a lot more, and what do you think about also Allegra being around a lot more. Are you optimistic? Are you excited? Are you a bit upset? You're like, oh, I don't really like that character. Don't want to see them around that much. But I think this is a good thing. I think that obviously you're probably going to have some people leaving eventually as we head in towards the later seasons. It's going to be season seven. They've been around for years. I really do feel like they are leading up to 
a moment where Cisco's going to leave the show where I think Carlos is probably going to leave because if you've realized the last few episodes and this happened a lot last season he's very absent he's not there and he's returning this episode this week after the break and basically he wasn't around for like two or three episodes like that so he keeps on taking these breaks and I feel just this sort of disinterest in the show a little bit in regards to Carlos so I would say what they are setting up for Brandon McKnight's character that being Chester P. Runk he is probably being set up to be a replacement of Cisco Ramon I don't think Kayla is actually going to be replacing anyone I feel like she's just gonna be a new addition but I feel like Chester P. Runk is literally like the Cisco character and you know like they did with Wynn leaving Supergirl they sort of primed Brainy to take over and in the end you know I don't think Brainy worked as well like nearly as well as Wynn I think Brainy's fine but I think Chester has a better chance to be honest than Brainy at taking over Cisco's role but that's just my theory as of right now I feel like they are setting up this character to take over when Carlos leaves the show because I do think it's kind of inevitable very very soon like I don't see any of the other cast members leaving like obviously Grant's not gonna leave I don't see Danielle leaving I don't see Jesse I don't see Candace and I don't see Tom leaving like I feel like they're pretty much like gonna stick around but the only person who definitely feels like maybe he is sort of debating leaving is definitely Carlos Valdez and in addition to this to back it up you've had these rumors like especially last year towards the end of the season there was actually reports that he was set to leave but he stayed around and he returned after like some absent episodes here and there and a similar thing has been happening this season where he goes away for no apparent reason they make up an excuse Camilla's like oh he's like trying to find out all this stuff to do with the new matters and everything like that but when in reality you guys know that it's because Carlos isn't in Vancouver or he isn't around on the set so I really do feel like they are setting up Chester to take over from Cisco in the near future whether it's next season or the season after we'll have to wait and see but it seems to be like this is the case okay so yeah that is sort of it to do with the flash let's quickly move on to a synopsis from Supergirl so I thought I would include this because I don't think I can make like a whole video on it so this is for the synopsis of episode 15 titled reality bites so this is how it goes Dreamer steps up to protect her community after her roommate is viciously attacked. Nia's roommate, Yvette, is attacked by a man targeting Dreamer because he doesn't like that Dreamer is transgender and wants her to quit being a superhero. Determined to protect her community from additional harm, Dreamer refuses to give in to his threats and puts herself on the line of fire to stop him. Supergirl stands by Dreamer and enlists additional help from Brainy. Meanwhile, Alex, John, and Kelly attempt to rescue a man stuck inside a virtual reality escape room. So yeah, interesting stuff. This is obviously more of a episode that's going to be like separate from the story. It's going to be to do with this one idea that they've set up in the synopsis. So about, you know, attacking in regards to sexual orientation and everything like that. So this guy, he has a problem with Dreamer being transgender and basically he's being sort of this bigot it seems to be and he's like stop being a superhero you're transgender and it seems like this is actually kind of a dose of reality because you get so many people in real life or online especially online where you have people being sort of bigots and they're like oh you're transgender blah 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 you know you can't do this you can't do that and i think it's good that they tackle these issues on supergirl and i think it's good that it's like one individual story because i feel like occasionally supergirl has this problem where they do these sort of big ideas and these big themes that are really important but they do that instead of having an interesting story and so I feel like this episode is good because it's going to be a separate episode where you can focus on this one singular story that you're going for rather than dragging it out across the whole season like the sort of political stuff last season in relation to American politics in real life I think it's effective at some points but last season it actually never really worked because it was dragged on for so long so I am very much so looking forward to this episode I think it's an interesting concept and I think it's something that they should tackle and I'm glad that they're doing that 
And then the last part of the synopsis is, meanwhile Alex, Sean and Kelly attempt to rescue a man stuck inside a virtual reality escape room. Obviously, like going back to Comic Con, they said the theme is technology. I feel like they've sort of gone off of that. I feel like they've kind of forgot about that and occasionally they go to Obsidian and occasionally they go inside virtual reality or they do something in relation to Obsidian tech. And so I feel like this is not very interesting compared to the other part of the story. So this is probably going to be like a small part of the episode where Kelly is like, you know, doing some stuff to try and stop this guy from being stuck there. And she gets the assistance of Alex and John. So nothing too interesting about that. But the other part of the story is kind of interesting as well. So that's about it for this video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for 100,000 subscribers. We should be getting a tick soon, we should be getting a plaque, and what type of 100k special videos do you want to see, because I do want to make one, so I'll catch you guys later, goodbye. I see red.